Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're gonna to be doing another installment of the weekly meta breakdown. Um, what we do here is look at the top performing decks for respective arena uh, formats. This particular video will be on standard best of one. We have about a week and a half worth of data from Streets of New Capenna release. Um, if you're interested in the other formats, you could always tune into the playlist. I released standard best of one, best of three. Uh, we'll have Explorer stats this week from Untapped as well, so we'll look at those formats as well as um, we'll see how Historic looks. If there's enough data this week, I'll post Historic as well, but usually Historic is a bit lagging in terms of stats, just in terms of volume of games. So the way we get the data is from Untapped GG. It's a companion tool that runs alongside your arena client, tracks your win rates, uh, aggregates everybody's user data, and then gives you kind of computational results that we're seeing on the screen. Uh, it also syncs your collection, so you're able to see um, what decks you could build, what cards you need, stuff like that. Um, so we're going to kind of go from there. Um, it's free to use Untapped to start off with. Um, the link is in the video description down below if you want to check that out. I'll post all the deck lists in the video description as well. So if you want to check those out, you can just uh, copy paste it into Arena. Um, so looking at the actual uh, data, this is standard best of one, April 28th to May 8th. Um, so a bit more than a week worth of data. Uh, Platinum to Mythic rank 260,000 games of Magic played, and the top performing deck is Orzhov Angels. This is a black-white angel deck with a 65% win rate, um, and it's built around a couple of the new cards that we get in the set, predominantly Giada, Font of Hope. Uh, Giada does a lot of things for the angel deck, really, in standard at least, Angels was missing a good two-drop. Uh, Giada lets you ramp, it also lets your creatures kind of scale out burn-based removal, and it's another card that kind of snowballs. Um, right now, like in the Angel deck prior to it, you had Righteous Valkyrie, which is the card that had to be killed on sight, otherwise it kind of takes over the games. Now you also have Giada, which also plays a similar effect in being able to kind of take over the games. Uh, you have your Angel package, Youthful Valkyrie, uh, you have Starheim Unleashed that makes Angels, Legion Angel package in the sideboard, Furge's Retribution to make Angel tokens, and then kind of removal and uh, double strike anthem. You have Liaza as well, which lets you kind of recur some creatures. Um, then Elspeth could find you all this cheap stuff to cast. Luminarch's just a really good card. Clerics also trigger Righteous Valkyrie, so it's got that synergy. Also, it's just a creature scale. Um, Blood Chief Slayer's Vanishing versus Removal. A Jean Joe for Ramp, as well as kind of Recursion and just a good body. Um, some Emiria calls as creature lands mixed in there as well. Um, so this is Black White Angels. Uh, up next is Nyaya Agro Humans, basically no change from the previous meta. This is Mono White Splash Green Red, um, and you're splashing Green Red for like a Minsk, some copies of Halana and Elena, as well as Sigarda Champion of Light. This deck's usually probably like the last six, four to six months has been towards the top every month. Um, you can see with like Untapped, for example, I only have two to four Halanas needed for this deck. So I need two of these. I have 22 wild cards for rares, so I can craft those if I want. Um, and then notably, this one's playing the Secluded Courtyard uh, to play humans just to fix with the, the mana color, uh, sorry, mana color to cast the cards. Um, up next, Mono White Aggro, another deck that's seen little to no change, in this case, no change. Um, back on the Wandering Emperor as uh, four of. We've seen some play Legion Angel, uh, we've seen them just play Skyclaves and Brutal Cathars. It's kind of mixed. Um, if you are anticipating a bit more interaction out of your opponent, the Legion Angels play really nice, or the Wandering Emperors play really nicely. Um, full four of Intrepid Adversaries also an inclusion here just to kind of scale up your team. And we're seeing a, a return to kind of the more targeted removal in the Mono White deck. So a little bit more mid-range focus. Um, be interested to see, like Thalia taxes a bunch more cards in this deck, but... Over, overall, eh, all in all, not too bad. I like the decks sometimes too when they're playing even like a Crawling Barons, just increase the amount of creature lands to get in a play around um, board wipe, stuff like that. We have Mono Black Control, uh, another deck with zero new cards in it. So just your Blood on the Snow deck, this one's at 60% win rate. Um, Deadly Dispute Package, which we've seen for months now. Um, Soul Transfer, just as Exile Removal, your four Invoke Despairs, Onyx in here, Blood on the Snow as Sweepers with your Meat Hook. Um, really just trying to eat away at these creature heavy decks that just kind of fold to single uh, Sweeper. Uh, you have your Wishboard with, for the Learn Package with like Confront the Past, Reanimate Planeswalker, Sciences for Ramp, 
at this point you've pretty much seen a lot of these cards in action. Um, Another deck, uh, no new cards in this one either. Um, could be like, it's a smaller set in the sense, it's also multicolor where you see in best of one, it tends to be a lot more linear, um, which tends to be one to two colors. Uh, this is a Selesny Enchantments deck, so not necessarily the Naya Runes deck, um, a little bit more mid-range focus. So you do have some Runes package, like Rune of Might for Trample. Um, you have your Kami that still gets bigger with Jukai Naturalist, Generous Visitor. Uh, but a bit more removal in this one. You got Borrowed Time, Touch of the Spirit Realm, uh, Circle of Confinement. So just more interaction uh, played in here. You have Weaver of Harmony to double up, enter the battlefield triggers or trigger to things. A wedding Announcement, Sparring Regiment as well gets things big, kind of gives pseudo vigilance and gives you access to a learn board as well. We have now we have some new cards. Gem Midrange, 59%. This is black, red, splash, two green cards. And those two green cards, Eska's Chariot. So Eska's Chariot could copy the non-legendary version of Opnixus. So you can get a, another Planeswalker token every time you attack with it. Uh, you also have Unleash the Inferno. So four mana, deal seven, and then excess damage can blow up an artifact or enchantment that your opponent has equal to the difference in damage to CMC. Um, and basically you're trying to maximize on two mana, three power creatures. You have both Blood Tithe Harvester and Underdog that allow you potentially on turn three to get two, three starting loyalty of Nixus. Some Trespassers, Fable in there mixed in, just kind of a grindy mid-range deck. You got a bunch of removal in there with some meat hooks as well. You have access to the Gem Triome, Zotora's Proving Ground, and then you have Pathways as well to hit the green source. Then we have a Golgari mid-range. I uh, got a couple new cards in here. So it's kind of a mid-rangey, the rock style deck. So uh, a lot of removal, um, you have Blood Chief's Thirst, you have Infernal Grass, Meat Hook, um, interesting selection of one ofs in part because you have Dig Up that can let you tutor. Um, this one's looking to kind of recycle your graveyard over time. So uh, Topiary Stomper lets you find lands. Um, Binding of the Old Gods lets you pull in lands as well. Uh, and then with Harness Affinity or Jukai uh, Shigeki, you can kind of shuffle things back, kind of rebuy your Invoke Despairs as well. You got a Titan of Industry on the top end, so kind of a cool deck. Um, you got like Sorulf in there as kind of removal as well, good against like the creature heavy decks. And then similar, so we saw the Naya aggro, which was mono white, splash two colors. This is the Esper aggro, 57%. Play this a bit, it's pretty fun. Um, so you're basically playing Esper for two cards, Rafine Scheming Seer. So it's kind of, it seems kind of odd you're playing a four of Legendary, um, but this particular Legendary lets you connive and kind of turn through the, the bad cards in your deck. The ward came up a lot of times and just like an evasive threat that keeps getting bigger was really good. You also have Obscura Interceptor to kind of temple your opponent. Uh, a lot of games I was able to like bounce farewell or meat hook and then just, you know, your opponent's like, hi, sweep your board. Now you have one card in hand. And you do this and you kind of tempo them out. It also plays nicely because you have another four mana flash threat. So your top end's all flashed. You know, they don't know what you have on that top end. Um, still a little soft to uh, like heavy sweeper decks, but a lot of times these mono white decks do tend to be that. It's just dependent on like, does your tax effects kind of coincide? The one thing I found with playing this deck, I personally probably would have wanted like another one or two one drops. Um, the Sungold Sentinels were fine. Um, they came up when against a Storm the Festival deck. I actually played against CGB for his like mono green uh, ramp deck that's going to be featured in a couple of slides. Um, and I was able to eat two Storm the Festivals with it. Uh, but I, I think just playing out early on one just allows you to kind of churn through your deck a little bit more. Uh, then we have Rakdos Sacrifice Anvil. Basically, the Anvil decks now get to play off Nexus, just another way to kind of deal incidental damage. Uh, these decks really want to nickel and dime your opponent. You know, you take a ping of life, life here, your Anvil drains for one, your creature dies with Meat Hook. So just kind of incidental damage, incidental damage, incidental damage. And now you have Obnixus as well as another way to kind of push through that damage. This version's at 55%, and it's pretty much the same as like the Explorer version as well. So this is a deck you can kind of build once and almost play it in two formats. You just get better mana base in Explore. And then lastly, this is the Mono Green Ramp deck. So I believe it originally came from Arjuna from Arena Cast Pod, um, Arena Cast Podcast. Uh, CGB was played it for a video. I didn't make it into the video, but we did play. I was on the Esper deck. Um, 
So kind of just an early ramp deck. You got Nether Winter, Dryad, Emergent Sequence, Togbiary, Stomper. So you're basically just trying to get the top end. Uh, you drop a bunch of Storm the Festivals. You have uh, Titan of Industry. And then you kind of self-mill. And then with Shigeki, you kind of buy things back and get that value there. Kind of grind out your opponent that way. Um, so that's it for the week. Best of one standard. Let me know what you're playing, what's been working out well, what hasn't. Um, if you've been enjoying Standard, if you've been dabbling with this Explorer, if you're playing Historic, if you're the last three people playing Alchemy, let me know that as well. I'm just curious. Uh, it's kind of how I tailor these videos. The Standard Best of One tends to get the most views, so usually pump that out first. Um, but if, there, if I get enough responses that a certain format's very popular, then I'll focus on those metas first. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you have a great one, and stay safe out there.